Hi everybody. Um, today I'm going to work on making a ball mill jar. I'll be building a ball mill soon, and um, so this is kind of the first stage of that project that you'll see. So this is going to have to be a two-piece pot, I think. I'm just kind of making my pad here, as always. stiffer than I'd like it to be. It's fresh from the bag. But, uh, I'll roll with it. So I've got 10 pounds of clay here um, that I've wedged up, ready to go for this jar. This is going to be the bottom portion of the jar, and then I will begin the top portion afterwards. It's, a, it's pretty much a perfect cylinder, and I'm going to throw it 10 inches in diameter and about 10 inches in height. It's a hot one today. The studio's a little, uh, a little muggy today. With the sun beating down on the roof, I don't have a swamp cooler yet, so. I'm huffing and puffing a little bit. That's probably why. All right. I'm gonna give that one more color. It's still got a little bit of a a little bit of a wiggle to it. diameter that I want my uh, jar to be here. Almost a little bit as if I were making a plate. And that is just about 10 inches right there. I'm going to open down stop about there and measure. Yeah, that's about right. I'm giving myself about a half inch bottom here. Um, and now I'm going to open. So I'm I'm undercutting here. And then basically I'm going to take this clay and basically just stand it up as the wall. That's a move I learned watching some English potters. 
making flower pots. It sure saves some work. It's compressing my bottom. pull with my first pull. And I don't want to really throw this too thin. Um, it doesn't have to be chunky, but I don't want this to be a breakable piece of ceramic, so I'm going to uh, probably keep it at like a quarter inch or so. I think that's probably about right. Take some of this excess up from the base here. Comfort. the outside some. I do want this to be smooth um, because it has to roll on rollers. Oh shoot. Uh, don't do that to it. That's not advisable. I'll see if I can iron that back out again. If not, I might have to start over. Mm, I think we're going to be okay. Bit of, bit of a klutz. What can I say? Alrighty, I think that's about perfect for what I need here. next step is I'm going to torch this to stiffen it some, and then I'll throw the top of this container on a separate back. So I'm going to torch this, and I will be back to filming when I'm done. Alrighty everybody, I'm back. I'm going to make the lid now. So, let's see here. I'm going to measure the diameter of my jar that I've just torched, and it is nine and a half inches in diameter. So I'm going to make a nine and a half inch lid. This is three pounds of clay. Which I wouldn't 
bats are a bit absorbent. This is three pounds, um, which is probably enough. I'm kind of uh, basing this all off of a hunch. Nothing's real exacting here. Alright. I'm going to center this out. Or open this out to uh, about 10 inches. Got a bit of an air bubble in there. too far. That's just about right. Pressing. And I want to throw the mouth of the jar to about four inches. So I'm going to open up in the center. Kind of peel this up. Let's see where we are here. Yeah, a little more. I want to thicken up the rim some. I don't want it to chip easily. reaching in underneath and I'm kind of undercutting on the inside. So this is going to get torched as well and then they'll be assembled. So I'll short show the torching on this one. I'm going to uh, join the two sections now. So I'm in the process of scoring this rim here. And I'm going to add a bunch of slip on to there. Like so. I'm going to take my top rim and score it everywhere. I'll do this on camera so you can see. I'm going to just run around the whole perimeter like this. Doesn't matter if it's super um, regular or if it goes a little bit too far because we can smooth that out on the inside in a second. slip on this as well. 
You really don't want to take your chances with joints like this. Um, especially if things have been torched, they because they might be different drynesses, there might be greater shrinkage rates involved. I mean I know for sure that this lid is definitely less dry than the jar. Um, but I don't think it'll make too big of a difference. So I'm gonna just set this on here and center it up. So it's a bit oversized. I'm gonna make sure it's centered. And then they'll just apply some downward pressure. Kind of seal it in place. So my camera turned off for some reason, but I just wanted to show what I did. So after I put that lid on, the, the top of this jar on, I removed the excess that was hanging, that was overhanging the edge here with my needle tool just by coming in underneath and cutting it through and removing the ring. And then I just used a rim, a rib to smooth out the transition. I ribbed a little bit on top and ribbed on the side. And so that's the finished product. So that will be glazed and fired soon. And that will become the ball mill jar.